Uh, if you'd like to turn, oops, if you'd like to turn to the book of Second Chronicles and go to chapter 14, would be helpful. I want to look today at the story of good King Asa. And it runs through three chapters, 14 through 16, but I'm not going to try and read them all. Um, but uh, just sort of uh, pick out some uh, edited highlights, as it were. So uh, if you have uh, Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 2, that will be, um, that will be good. So uh, Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. But he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places. And he broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to observe the law and the commandment. He also removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah. And the kingdom was quiet under him. And he built fortified cities in Judah for the land had rest. He had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore, he said to Judah, let us build these cities and make walls around them and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Well, uh, Asa, as he, uh, at least in the beginning of his reign, was very faithful to the Lord. And uh, I was thinking to myself as I... Uh, read through this, uh, if some, whether someone would say today, um, the land is ours, England, Wales is ours, because we have sought the Lord our God, and he has given us rest on every side. And I think if someone did say that, he would probably be a candidate for the men in white coats, uh, because uh, <clears throat> we do not have rest on every side. The land is not ours. We are a tolerated and despised minority within the land, and uh, we do not have peace on every side, or rest on every side. Um, I looked up this word rest a little bit. I, I, uh, my Hebrew is uh, very limited to say the least, uh, but uh, it, it's not connected uh, directly with peace, but uh, it, seems to be, um, it seems to be that peace uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ gives and not as the, wor not as the world gives. Um, the world, the best the world can do is give us an absence of war, which it's failing to do at the moment. But uh, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the rest and peace that the Lord uh, the Lord gives is 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 a peace of heart, and this is what I think they had in the days of uh, of King Asa, and they had that because they sought the Lord uh, their God, and uh, and I just want to move on now. Um, the rest of chapter 14 is taken up with uh, a battle um, and with the aid of uh, God, Asa defeats a much larger army that came against him. And then 15 and verse one. Um, now the spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa. And he said to him, hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, without law. But when in their trouble, they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times, there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the land. So nation was destroyed by nation, city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Well, um, the first thing we note here is uh, that the seeking of the Lord is not something that we do, and then having found him, we cease to seek. The seeking of the Lord goes on all our lives, and if we, uh, if we forsake or leave off that seeking, then we will find that uh, we have lost uh, that uh, close communion with the Lord that we seek. He will forsake us, not permanently if we are his, but uh, he will, uh, we will lose that communion with him. And for a long time, he says, Israel has been without the God, the, of the true God, without a teaching priest, without law. And so much of the professing or visible church today is without 
these things. Um, in my church, we do door-to-door uh, -door outreach and we call upon um, uh, a house and it was answered by this young lady. And when we told her we were from uh, my church, uh, she was very pleased to tell us that she went to a, a, a different church and her parents went there and her grandparents went there. And uh, they were extremely happy there and it was great. And they loved the pastor and it was absolutely super. So we asked, as we tend to do, um, if you were to die tonight, how confident are you that uh, you would uh, find yourself in heaven? And uh, she was troubled by this. And uh, well, she said, when we, we do our best, we're, we're told the pastor is always on to us to try as hard as we can and make us uh, do our very best. And uh, so we then asked, well, wh where do you think uh, Jesus comes into this? And uh, she actually had no idea where Jesus came into it. And uh, whose fault is this? Uh, certainly she must bear her own responsibility for her ignorance, but is it not uh, the teaching priest, if I put it that way? Is it not the person who was, uh, is it not her church, her denomination, which has fallen so far away that they no longer teach anything resembling uh, the, uh, uh, the, the true gospel. But uh, we are promised that uh, when in our trouble we turn to the Lord our God of Israel, verse 4, and we seek him, he will be, we, um, he will be found uh, by us. And uh, we have at this moment uh, this, this, this turmoil and, uh, that, that is described. And, uh, you know, churches are, uh, are collapsing in some state cases, and, uh, you know, few are... Uh, are, are reviving, though that, praise God, there are some, and, uh, you know, uh, we're not in the state that we would like to be. But let's just uh, carry on with the story from verse 8. When Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land Israel and of Judah and Benjamin, and from all the cities which he'd taken in the mountains of Ephraim, and he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord, and he gathered together all Judah and Benjamin, those who dwelt with them from Ephraim, Manasseh and Simeon, for they came over to him in great numbers from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. They gathered together in Jerusalem the third month, the 15th month of the reign of Asa, and they offered to the Lord at that time 700 bulls, 7,000 sheep from the spoil they had brought, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, and whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting and trumpets and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn it with all their heart and sought him with all their soul. And he was found by them. And the Lord gave them rest all around. Well, I, I'm not going to suggest today that um, we, we go to our churches and... Uh, um, make a covenant to seek the Lord, and anyone who doesn't should be put to death. Um, I think this might have certain negative consequences for us. So, uh, do that. But it does suggest, doesn't it, that those who are not interested in seeking the Lord, those those who will not uh, take time to seek the Lord, attend the prayer meetings and uh, and, and the midweek meetings, uh, are in some sense at least surplus to requirements. Um, and uh, they came together at this time, and it's notable that people from the northern kingdom, people from Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, uh, were also coming because they heard that the Lord was with uh, Judah and with King Asa. And it does seem to me that uh, if, if, we are, uh, if, if we are positive in seeking the Lord, if we are um, open and uh, about seeking the Lord and um, we, we let people know what we're doing and uh, publicize our events and so forth, we will find that people will come across. We have in our church um, four or five couples now who have come uh, from other churches. I, I take no pleasure in that because it means that the other churches aren't preaching the gospel. I would much sooner have people who uh, don't know the Lord at all coming and seeking him. But uh, people will come, people will join, uh, if they uh, see that something is going on, because there is unrest in the land. Um, 
people are so worried. Um, they've been worried about coronavirus, they've been worried about war, and now they're worried about poverty with all the bills going up, and people are at their wits end. And if they are churchgoers, they may well find that they get no comfort within um, their, uh, their, their own assembly because the, um, the, the preachers have nothing to say to them. So uh, I don't know how one would go about these things, but to enter into a covenant among ourselves and with others, just to seek the Lord God of our fathers with all our heart and with all our soul, and to take an oath to that we will follow uh, the Lord. And uh, then we will see surely the blessing of the Lord as Asa saw it at that time. Now, if you go into chapter 16, uh, you'll find that Asa didn't carry away, uh, carry on all his life uh, following the Lord closely, that when he was ill at some point, he uh, relied uh, not on the Lord, but uh, on, uh, on doctors. And when he uh, was attacked again, despite the great victory that he'd had in chapter 40, uh, he, uh, he made a, a, a treaty with King Ben-Hadad of Syria to try and save him. So he fell away when he got older. And a few of us here, uh, uh, I think, are perhaps in the first flush of youth. And uh, it is a fact, I think, that people tend, there is a danger in people falling away in some ways as they get older. Uh, either they, uh, uh, they, they lose their zeal in some way, or they uh, get compromised, as King Solomon did, uh, by his wives and so forth. Or as they get older, they get lifted up with pride. Um, you can read the story of King Uzziah in Second Chronicles 25, um, where he was uh, a good chap to start with, but in the end, his heart was lifted up by pride. And uh, I was thinking of uh, the man Caleb, uh, and um, he says, um, here I am this day, 85 years old, and yet I'm as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. And just as my strength was then, so, is my, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, I, I'm not going to ask you if you are as strong physically as you were 45 years ago. Um, but I will take the liberty of asking whether you're as strong spiritually. And I hope you are. And I think it is so necessary for all of us as we grow older to ensure that we don't uh, fall away. There are so many different uh, examples within the Bible of people doing that. So let us continue to seek the Lord um, in our churches, uh, perhaps as part of the, uh, the gospel partnerships, uh, and also to uh, going back to um, chapter 14, um, to make bars around our churches in the sense that we guard our doctrines. Uh, there's a sermon by Spurgeon where he talks about um, uh, the parapet that uh, people were supposed to uh, put around their the roof of their houses to stop people falling over. And he likened that to the defences that a church should have uh, to keep the doctrines, to keep the teaching, and to keep people from falling away from the church, and to make sure that we have built, uh, uh, to build uh, walls and towers and gates and bars uh, around the doctrines of our church so that we, we are not uh, falling away on, on either side. But um, uh, when uh, Judah sought the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul, he was found by them and the Lord gave them rest all around. And this rest, I think, can, uh, is something that uh, I would say is greater than merely the absence of war and uh, so forth. Uh, it, it is a blessing that the Lord bestowed, and we can have rest even in the middle of turmoil uh, within the war. The, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the state, the nation, and the world all around us. So, uh, shall I come to prayer now, Chuck? Yeah, so should we, should we pray together?